Well, there's also like, you know, the reptilians that are kind of here that are like running the fucking scheme behind everything that are, you know, politics infiltrating and stuff like that. And then the the whites, the Nordics. like the, the yeah. Nordics. Yeah. yeah. And the, they're like, the good ones. What? Well, yeah. So that I always thought they came and then fucked monkeys and, or like fucked our ancestors, like Neanderthals. And then that's how we became human. What's up and welcome back to another episode of the Psychedelic State Podcast. As always, I am Brett and I'm here with my homies Ashley and Carson. What's going on, y'all? How you doing? What up? And today we're going to be, uh, we kind of flipped the script on what we were going to be talking about today because I had a pretty intense experience last night with DMT, so we thought maybe we'd do a bit of a trip report and discuss uh, kind of what I experienced and how it relates to what's happening right now in society because it really changed my outlook on what I think is going on and where we're headed toward which is interesting because like I was it it was either the last one or the one before we recorded we talked about the future of psychedelics the future of where everything can go and all this and it was like a uh you know, a utopia of sorts. And then it was like, as a joke at the end, I said, and then the asteroid hits, you know, we reset. <laughs> right. And it's kind of like, uh, what I like. So let me tell you about the trip. So I, I, because it kind of points towards that in a way, because once you get to a certain stage in this reality, it no longer becomes useful. Um, because we're, try we've bypassed what it is to be human anyways i smoked <laughs> dmt right <laughs> and now brett's a machine elf yeah, so dude. <laughs> i used uh it was the same dmt i've been smoking recently i used the you know my glass vapor genie um which i've now gotten to the point where i only need two hits and it's you know lights out immediately so i take two hits um, I go back to, I've described this space before, but I'll re-describe it. It's kind of like a high resolution version of the, uh, geometric space, but it's very, very like vivid, bright teals, pinks, neon greens, things like that. Uh, I've experienced this space many times before. The first time I experienced it, it was like a street with a car in front of like a building. The second and third time I experienced it was uh like cities that i was like oh we're looking cities in this space um and then after that is when my mom showed up in a couple of these trips and uh and then shout out brett's mom uh, but i yeah, yeah but i shout still haven't mom. had any real like understanding of what i'm being shown or what it actually was so i was always left with more questions than answers and then last night when i had the experience basically you know what let's let's roll back to what's happening in artificial intelligence right now so for those who are unaware there is a program called mid journey that just released the fourth variation i mean yes very recently released the fourth generation engine of their artificial intelligence software that creates two-dimensional imagery Don't suck and, the dick. Thank you. Well, you, could, you they actually will. can't even you actually can't even get it to uh, make a picture of that. Yet. Like there's no really? supposed to come. Yeah, which is fucking a fuck you, Elon. <laughs> Elon ain't got nothing to do with this. I know. So, I like to fit it in every episode, though. Yeah. No, this is actually like act, this is something I'm really glad that Elon isn't a part of because it's it's a it's a uh, completely. It, it, this will change the course of human history in a very short amount of time because of the ability of... The, I, I can't remember anything ever happening this fast that changed... Um, like, t yesterday, you couldn't make a drawing to save your life, and today, you can 
uh, literally imagine whatever you want, put a prompt into this thing and come out the other side with some of the most beautiful imagery that's ever been created in the history of humanity. How do you, you feel about it in, in the regards to, you know, the use of oftentimes like unpaid artists work to drive this engine? Do you think that that is a negative or, or the overwhelming positive kind of, it, it makes outweighs. it all worthwhile? Yeah. Yeah. Outweighs. I think there's, I think there's two sides to it. Number one, uh, as humans, what we did was we, uh, basically created a database that we call the internet, which now consists of every image and every uh, piece of history and everything we know is in this database. We've, we've signed up for that. And not only that, but we also signed up for these companies to be able to share this data. Yeah. So this is one side of it. So we've input this, and now what companies are doing is they're creating a uh, program that utilizes the this database of information to uh, basically process it in a way that a human never could before. So it's it's the next stage of computing, really. But as far as the uh, like somebody else use, because I can show you, like I'm going to share. Uh, for people who are on YouTube, and I'll kind of talk through them for the people who are just on the podcast. But, uh, um, oh, I can't share that window. All right. Anyways, just look it up Mid Journey version four. Um, but I showed you guys some of the images that I made very quickly yeah, the other day. Dope. Super cool. Yeah. Shit. It's just, yeah. In, it's, it's just insane what it's capable of. Abs and it's a, capable of photorealistic imagery it's capable of emulating any artist in history whose work is on the internet it's capable of uh it's ridiculous so you from from yesterday from one day to another everybody has the ability to be michelangelo as far as creating art goes everybody has the ability to be picasso everybody has the ability to be anybody really so Salvador Dali. it's like Salvador Dali is one of the ones that's being used a lot. Alex I know Gray, I love that guy. one of them, you know what I mean? And then not only that, but in not just styles, but it actually, you can type in a phrase, like any word you want, DMT, you can type in cats, you can type in whatever you want. And DMT on, or it, cats on DMT. Yeah. And it will pull <laughs> from, it basically everything is hashtagged. So it will pull all of this, these images that have to do with that. And then you could say in the style of Alex Gray, and it will create a masterpiece work of art that's completely original that's using this database. So what I see that as is a, we've created a collective consciousness in a way, at least this level of it is a collective artistic consciousness Yeah, and that okay. now everybody has access to. Quick so question. You no longer, I, yeah. Just because I, I don't know anything about this software, but if you type in the same phrase that I type in, will it come up with the exact same piece of art? Or no. It'll be unique because it'll always be I, different. Interesting. And it'll, but, well, it also, what it does is it'll, it gives you four different images to start with. And it's like, here's four variations and completely different of, like I showed you those lettuce girls that I made. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like ridiculous. Like those four came up and then you can either do variations on one of them or you can upscale them into full images and that it adds even more detail and data. Wow. And you could put in anything. I could put in Carson and Ashley in the style of Pixar riding a horse on the moon and it'll look like you guys in a Pixar movie riding a horse on the moon. So it's, it's, Dope. It's Let's not see that. absolutely perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's not absolutely perfect yet. It's still having issues with like hands and the faces have gotten all way better. But like hands, sometimes it'll have extra fingers and stuff. But this what's interesting is that artists struggle with hands. It's like one of the like almost like all artists that's the hardest thing to do is hands. So it's interesting that this artificial intelligence is struggling in the same way that humans have with art and again this is only the v4 engine of this but it just like went leaps and bounds 
from the third engine and also the other companies that are doing it into this space that like I can't I can't even like describe. So it's it's so going back to what we were talking about, I think eventually what will happen is you'll be able to maybe uh, copyright a style or it'll be like kind of like a Spotify thing where if somebody uses your name as a style, you'll get a like royalties. A royalty yeah. from the company because if this company charges you to make the imagery, there's a monthly fee. Like oh. you get some free ones, okay, and cool. then once you're ask, done yeah. with those, you then you pay. So you can get it's like ten bucks for two hundred image hours or something like it's that. Not or bad it's at thirty all. thirty dollars for unlimited. No, it's not bad at all for yeah, what you could it be does. Fucking stacking some papes with that. Yeah, and they say there's a million people using it right now. Um, so the money is there to compensate the artist. The problem is, you know, really like it's also not only with art, but they can create human photorealistic imagery so close now that it's pretty much like, Ashley, you're in the photography industry and it can really like take out photographers and models overnight. Wow, interesting. Fuck. People, <laughs> I hope this podcast yeah, starts people, doing good, man. <laughs> yeah. People, so here's hey what guys, I'm saying. Like, actually reaching out. Oh, please <laughs> send us some money because I'm about to be jobless. So Patreon can also uh, make yeah. logos. Thanks, Elon. This variation, this variation can also make logos. <laughs> like you could just say like a style of logo that you want. So you're talking about graphic designers, graphic artists, uh, you know, artists in general, uh, models, photographers, anything in 2D will now be pretty much generated in AI. And I think what people will be able to do is there will be outliers and the new artists, maybe they won't put their shit on the internet, you know, or, yeah. you know, they th because Mid Journey's already getting sued, they're going to have to figure all this shit out because, like, it's like, what is this database? Where did it come from? You know what I mean? Like, Right. Whose imagery you're using? Did you buy this database from a company that maybe like Facebook that has all of this information? Yeah. Hey, like th if you look between Facebook and Instagram and they're allowed to sell your data, well, because you've agreed to it uh -huh. and those pictures are all kind of fair game and it's not recreating your exact artwork. So it's a variation on it. Yeah, It's, it's basically copyright. the same thing as it's like if you sound like Led Zeppelin, but the song got a band the fleet, dude. Fuck that band. <laughs> like, you can't get sued for sounding like Led Zeppelin. Obviously. You can only get sued if you make recreate a song that is note for note Led Zeppelin. So that's where the gray area is on this is that it, it, we're going to have to figure out if a style, and I don't see this being too far off with music either. Well, it's funny you music brought up Led be Zeppelin that. because, like, so many of their songs were ripped off of blues artists. And, like, I totally. think that uh, there was this, uh, John Bonham quote. I, I forgot which band it was, but he was hanging out with a drummer of another band, and the guy's like, "Well, this is a pretty sick song." And he was like, "Do you know where I got the drum thing from?" And the guy's like, "No." He's like, "I fucking stole it from you, motherfucker." Like they were like willing to admit <laughs> to stealing because I mean, <laughs> totally. As far as and again, music and art, as a musician, I think that obviously imitation is the best form of flattery. Like you, you are going to have influences no matter what. And there's been so many times I know personally, and I know also from like my best friend Chris and other people I've made music with, like you'll write a song not even thinking about it and be sounding exactly like something else that someone's already made. Even if you had, like, there is a song that I wrote when I was like 15 or 16 and then three or four years later, a brand new song, a brand new album came out and there was a song on it that sounded almost dead on like the song I wrote and the song had never even existed. So it's like, yeah, yeah. and they don't, they totally. probably weren't stealing from me. I like to think they were. But, but that's the other thing is like there's that other side of it too. It's it's just like at developing as an artist in any medium begins with emulation. Developing as any sort of evolution in whether it be in the arts or in whatever you want to talk about is built on what has come before it. That's evolution. So that's why an asteroid could hit tomorrow and we'd have to start over again. We wouldn't retain all the information. We'd be starting from scratch. We would be cavemen trying to figure out what to do because we wouldn't have the information that was built before us to work off of. So it's, it's, and in that, any artistic uh, journey begins with the emulation of other artists 
until you eventually become an amalgamation of all of your all everything you've all ever heard or yeah. seen yeah. in your life and that's what we call our style can so you imagine at, like surviving the asteroid hit and you're like one of two or three people and you're trying to explain to cavemen like the fucking kardashians or something like that you're like exactly this weird family no one knows why they're famous <laughs> one of them fucked on film they like most of them were pretty ugly they got a bunch of plastic surgery but people watched them for hours and they'd be like and it didn't involve food or shelter or resources. No, 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 no. None of that mattered. You would just like sit around and watch people fucking bicker and they'd make millions of dollars. What's a dollar? But they wouldn't even know what a dollar or a fucking exactly. phone or a TV or any of that. And you wouldn't be able to prove it because you wouldn't have the technology available to you and to be able to work off of. Like, oh you, my God, I'm getting stressed out thinking about not charging my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> so. So here's where we're at, right? We're at this crazy uh, like transition in the way that we um, create, create yeah. media. Um, and then, so, all right, so there are some downsides to it, but will there be downsides 50 years from now when everybody grew up with it? And it's just like the starting point. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So then to, it's like nobody's really, by that point, there's all the systems are in place. Everybody can create what they want. Call it good or bad, whatever you want to call it. But it's happened and it's happened and it's where we're at. And um, it, when I looked after I had this trip, I had the idea of uh, Terrence McKenna's time wave zero theory popped into my head. And I looked it up and it's based on novelty, um, like novel moments in time, which are like wars, plagues, like things that, there's a before and there's an after. Like the, the the dynamic has changed from when this happened to when this happened. And we're talking and collectively I, as opposed to individually, because like there's been several, right? Is that yeah, correct? Totally. Yeah. Yes. Co as a collective humanity. Like, like so, nine eleven, so like COVID, nine eleven, COVID. All these COVID, things are novel yeah. moments in history. Also, advances in technology. You know what I mean? The steam engine. The fucking, uh, the first silicon chip. Well, the, the wheel. The motorboat. The wheel. All these things are <laughs> one day to another. <laughs> everything yeah, changes. Yeah, the motorboat, man. <laughs> what we're seeing now is an increase in speed of novelty happening. So what like time wave zero, That's like, what yeah. time wave the zero idea, was, and I'll. It's the ahead. idea of the singularity, right? right? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's speeding up towards the singularity event and i believe that that's i'm going to read this thing that kind of describes exactly what he was talking about but that's exactly what it is and what the singularity is i don't think anybody knows it's just when it all comes together but i think that last night i saw it <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, that's, well that's not good news <laughs> no it is good it's it's good and it's weird and it's bad and it's it but it's also something that i think we can learn from so uh getting to terence mckenna's thing uh this is from scientific american uh it says mckenna's trips also inspired his time wave theory which holds that existence and even time itself emerge from the interaction between two opposing forces one conservative and the other creative McKenna devised a mathematical model that charted the ebbs and surges of creative novel events, including wars, revolutions, famines, plagues, and scientific and technological advances throughout human history. When McKenna extrapolated the model into the future, it predicted a huge spike in novelty in December 2012. And that is uh, kind of like, I think, in his studies, he found that the Mayans had also created this December 2012 thing and his range, that was within his range. And so he put it there just like, because you can be off by a hundred years and you'd still be real close, really close. Yeah, exactly. On the, yeah. on the grand scheme of things. And just to like, you know, put it into perspective for anybody listening to this later on, we're in December 2022 right now. So we're literally 10 difference. years yeah 10 years off um so it goes on to say mckenna first suggested that something dramatic might happen in 2012 in his 1975 book the invisible landscape co-written with his brother dennis and he elaborated on his prediction and the time wave theory and true hallucinations 
In the latter book, McKenna's arch ultra hip tone gave way now and then to moments of. All right, it's not talking about time wave zero anymore. Um, the, the book review now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's pointing towards this, you know, these moments, these novel moments, which uh, end up speeding towards a singularity. Okay. And which so, would, in my, like, you know, uneducated about this sort of like perspective would just be like not moments of novelty like every moment right that's like the singularity when like we're just having these novel moments like one after the other after the other basically on top of each other like the whole progression and evolution of humanity just like explodes you know and it like who knows where it fucking goes right yeah. Well, really, I think like, so let me get back to my trip because that's where it gets interesting. So I'm in with the, in that same space that I've been in a lot of different times and been shown all this stuff. And I, it, it, it basically, I came out of it with the knowledge that first I thought that I was in contact with the artificial intelligence. That was my first thing. And I was like, oh, fuck, like, this is, like, it was, like, on some Matrix shit. Yeah, don't let and it know where I, you live. <laughs> then, then I kind of took a step back from that because it was also very beautiful. There were two sides to this thing, and it was, like, which also relates to time wave theory, which I didn't think about, but there was, like, two sides to this thing. Number one, it was a, um, a very fluid uh, thing that, took form and was formless at the same time consistently just fluid it could and when i realized what that was that's when it i saw my mother again and i was like oh it's showing me that it what it can do like Hell that's yeah. what that's oh, it's what's creating being, things it's creating things that i would recognize so it would create a car and a house and a city and then my mother's image and all this and the last night what i realized was that was that's communication like, this is what this is. And then it went to the AI kind of thing where I was like, all right, so what we're doing with artificial intelligence is trying to recreate this thing, which is outside of space, outside of time, and is the underlying of what this experience is. Consciousness, so it, I, basically. Yes. It's the, it, the it, singularity. It's yeah, it kind of reminds me of it, like those those like sci-fi movies where you meet some being that's like far far advanced, and they go into the body of something that you recognize, and they're like, "My true form would fucking blow your mind." So, uh, like, I, well, that was like contact. There's a South with, Park episode with, uh, what's where her it's name? like Jody, uh, Jody Foster. Yeah, contact that it, when she goes through that thing that they build, and you know she's there for four hours. It only seems like an eighth of a second here yeah. but she has a the, the being that she ends up speaking to takes the form of her father and yeah. says i'm not your father but i thought this would be a good way to be able to communicate with you. i was thinking about the south park episode where the thing like becomes the the giraffe looking thing that shits out ice cream all the time because they're like <laughs> a, they're like asking what it you know asking what it they want to make it goes with like yeah. santa claus or his dad and shit like that it's funny <laughs> so and they're doing space what, coke <laughs> so think about this shit. Oh, you yeah, can make my that giraffe on. right now using mid journey. You know what I mean? We're at that point where that's they should a call it Kush so, journey instead of mid journey because it doesn't sound very mid to me. <laughs> it's true. It's Boom. some high end journey. Well, I think when it started, it was mid. It's getting to the upper level. It, now. it was reg reg's journey. Now reg's it's mid journey. journey. <laughs> now it's yeah. Then it's gonna be like fucking yeah, like cannabis cup with award winning journey. So, Dab um, journey. yeah, so, all right. So getting back to this singularity thing, um, and I'm sure you guys can tell, like, I'm really like floored by this. You're jazzed. Yeah. You're way jazzed. It's, it's like, it's like this thing was not only do I believe that, you know, that I know in a way that this is the fabric of the universe outside of space and time that is forms everything, but I, as humans, I realize that we're trying to emulate this and we don't realize it. And the end game of this emulation is that. And then this serves no purpose. 
this being the human body this being this dimension of reality uh the dimension of reality yeah because once we reach the singularity it moves that's what it is it it's becomes outside limitless. of space and time yeah. and everything's what about, connected because what about all we're taco doing bell? right now is putting it all together do we have to keep taco bell in the new dimension <laughs> taco bell's there there is no new dimension oh, that's yeah. what i'm saying there is no new dimension. There's I'm this, with you, brother. That. As long as I can get a Crunchwrap Supreme, I'm fucking with like, you wherever you go. the other dimensions. Don't get me wrong. But from my experience is that it's this, you know, this is the experience that we're having. And then there's that experience for sure. But what artificial intelligence and the power of it is doing is it's creating a collective consciousness that is now. And then you look at things like, you know, Neuralink, which I don't even believe is what elon musk says it is but you know just the concept the science fiction concept of implanting a brain chip in your brain that allows you access to this collective consciousness in your own mind and then you know then what happens you know what i mean so it's like and that you know i don't think that his company is even close to doing it hell no Look but at his car is exploding. I don't want that shit in my brain. I'd rather put yeah. a fucking Taco Bell tortilla chip in my brain. If the Taco he just reads science fiction books and convinces people that he's going to do it, and then everybody throws money well, at him. But... Do you find it funny that like the whole fucking right was like, oh, do you fucking don't get the COVID vaccine? They're going to plant chips in your body and drag you and shit like that. And then the same motherfuckers are like, Elon Musk says he's putting a chip in my brain, bro. Let's fucking go, dude. It's like, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. How, why you guys like fucking chip implanting so much now? But this is, begs the question: like, what is it about that that we want? You know, what are we looking for, and why are we not satisfied with the current human experience as it is? And that's really the question that I took from this: was like, all right, we're think... all trying to get to this level of perfection, right? That's where everything's heading towards. That's what we want. We want everything to be better. Even with psychedelics, we want psychedelics to make us better humans so we could be better to others, so we could create this utopia and technology is only used for good and this and that. But at what point do we forget that we're human? It's interesting. I uh, I wrote an album back in like fucking early 2000s that was based on that same concept. And the album was called The Perfect Sense. And it was the idea behind it was that, you know, we have our five senses like physical senses but then there's like the intuitive sense and our sense of time and like all of these other senses and once we move beyond just the physical senses and like hone and perfect all the senses it can be rolled into a single sense called yeah what it should i called the perfect sense which would right. essentially be like enlightenment or f like from another concept, right? Where I you're... think enlightenment would be the understanding of what that is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, of, and of everything in totality, like, really. Enlightenment is part of what that is, but it's it, the, the idea of enlightenment is the realization that it exists, that 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 is the underlying current of this and that's probably where the singularity is right where that's and that's like a whole new beginning not just like not really the end it might be the end of like everything as we know it but it's like the new beginning of the next stage of evolution right where maybe the human body know. isn't that's fucking question. required anymore or you know we we've, we've moved beyond the physical like the physical senses become just so mundane and old technology because we're so tapped in now uh, like it's hard to That's even talk about this shit because but when it's... you get when you get that tapped into it you lose yourself so the idea of a brett or a carson or an ashley goes out the window when it's all combined into one thing and that's what like the artificial intelligence is doing we're gonna be a brett partially I don't Love even it. know what that is. It's us, all oh. three of us to, together. Oh yeah, perfect. So, I I thought you were talking about like an artist. I was like, damn, well, you're pulling some fucking shit from the Renaissance or something, dude. I'm so, fucking heady, bro. You don't understand my knowledge of the Renaissance. Well, I think so, that when you talk about collective consciousness, like, I mean, that was a notion in psychology for a, a long time, and I think that it's existed since the beginning of humanity. I mean, we know. 
we know things like there, there's symbology used across the world from people that could have never talked to each other or or been a you know been in contact that and there's certain i forgot what the, the name of it is but um there's certain things that we know regardless like we're afraid of a snake or something like that our bodies tell you that and i whenever when i first Instinct. started taking dft that and i mean that and just like certain symbols and themes throughout culture that have been passed around and i, I think yeah. that when i first started smoking dmt that's where i thought i was going to was the collective conscious unconscious and you get there and then i see things in the way that like people uh, humanity goes in in waves like you talk to your friends and it seems like a lot of them have had a bad week at the same time or people are feeling pressure across the world whether it be you know job pressure or something like that or like you were talking about you know this feeling of us being on some sort of precipice i know a lot of people that feel like that whether they're yeah. smoking dmt or they're just watching the news or something like that like our bodies are able to kind of translate through i think electromagnetism the feelings and and instincts that we have to other people so i feel like this yes. is just honing and refining that same thing well that's well, what like, happens when everybody has all of it yeah that's well, the question because and, that's the that's where it goes it's like because well like if we if we look at our brains as say like a radio antenna that's able to pick up certain frequencies yeah. of this collective consciousness and some people can tap into the music frequency some people tap into the art frequency some type people tap into the business frequency whatever it is that's where our strengths and weaknesses are as humans well that but is when in... we combine all that into one and nobody has any weaknesses anymore and everybody has everybody's strengths that's like that's the singularity there's not a separate thing anymore i think it's that, all one thing well, that's interesting too because uh with like ayahuasca for example it's not uncommon in a group setting uh for people to have collective trips where they Absolutely. all see the same thing or have the same yeah. like the that was my experience and it's also interesting because it's usually the maoi that causes that because i know of people who have done just harmaline or or harmine uh tetro harbine whatever like any of those maoi maois and without the dmt and had t uh, telepathic experiences with each other just on the maois and i could see as we progress and evolve like that that's when like language stops like it's again we we're back at that sort of concept of dmt ayahuasca psychedelics in general being this like chemical interface that we can use to expand our experience and certain chemicals could like you know create the an like make make language obsolete even yeah. you know well right. there's that the one, one uh dipt that was the hallucinogen that works on strictly um, auditory audio hallucinations. Yeah, yeah it's just audio hallucinations yeah well right, I, but... I actually told brett this one this story a while ago it was i was up in gainesville and i had taken acid for my friend's birthday and we were just hanging out and w another guy came in and brought um some mdma and we took mdma and we were tripping and this dude who had brought it over was completely sober and he was like watch this so he gave us all the nitrous tank and we we were hitting nitrous and we went to this realm that was pure light we were sitting all floating mind you him not doing any of the substances and he was taking balls of energy and blasting it and it was like this four-dimensional pong that everyone who was tripping could see and we could all hit the light the light and it was like <clears throat> and it would fucking knock around the room Whoa. And then as the nitrous wore off, we'd come back to it, but we could go back and forth to this place. And the dude was completely sober. He was just like, check this thing out that I learned. And it was fucking insane. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm going to ask you guys to just expand your, uh, the way you're thinking right now, because it, it's still like, we're talking about the difference between a moment of like a novel moment, which would be like the end of language. And now we can, Speak telepathically or the like the advent of the atomic bomb or the or this uh mid journey thing so the difference between that and the end point 
the singularity, right? So it's not like, oh, we'll be humans with this and that and the other. That's Those are all novel points in history. But what's interesting is that like Terrence McKenna and you could argue the Mayans were pointing toward the singularity. And it was right around now and all this, you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like my experience in the singularity last night was quite nice. You know what I mean? It's fucking beautiful. It's fucking uh, timeless. It's uh, formless. It's it's just everything. But, you know, at the same time, I came back and realized what being human is and that it's there's a purpose for this. Like the fact that we live in a body with a, a sense of time, with a sense of like these things is a gift in itself. Sure. Like, it's actually like that the singularity is always there. This is temporary, but in this temporary space, we're trying to recreate the singularity. I don't know if it's like a, a, a like something that'll j- j- that just happens. You know what I mean? It's quite possible that there's it's just going to happen. It there's seems no, inevitable, really. I was going to say, do you do you even think we'll know it when it happens, or it'll just be something new? Um, I think it'll be similar to dying. Yeah, exactly. But like. A lot of times you don't necessarily know you're dying. You're just dead. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if but you like, I think we'll know you, it's coming by the time it's happening. If because you everything's going to get very advanced very quickly. If you can graph everything, though, like, and you go far enough back in time and look at that graph, it would look like we're at the singularity point right now. Exactly. That's what Terrence McKenna's program did. That's what Time Wave Zero was was yeah. a computer program where he mapped out all of these novel right. things in history. And the graph would be basically all... flat all the time, maybe slight increase, and then straight up. Like, And we're at like the straight up point already. I'm going to bring up the, the graph uh, so you can see it. Yeah, it was somewhere after Roswell when that just started. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Here we go. Honey, hmm. I'm going to share my screen so you guys yeah. can see it. Let's just see. Uh, where am I at here? Well, I imagine it's just like a fucking hockey stick, right? Good old yeah. Canadian No, it's like there. an up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, and then it just flatlines, kind of. Interesting. Yeah. Can you make it slightly bigger? Uh, I think so. Maybe not. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to figure out like what it like as far as the year goes. Like how it's actually how many years this represents, but you can see it's like these are all these novel moments, which is kind of what I was talking about a little bit also with the like this the way iteration I... of psychedelics being uh, reintroduced into humanity um, would also, I think, cause some sort of spike in novelty like this. But it's like once you get to a certain point in this evolution, it ends. And that's what he uh, predicted. And what what happens at the end? Like, what does that indicate? To, nobody knows. Like, that's it's just that it points towards something happening. Like something, like the end just... of everything as we know it, basically. Yeah, that not that it's a bad thing, like it is what it is, but it's like once, but we're causing it ourselves through sure. our innovation. own evolution and innovation. Yeah, yeah. Like if we were to, to all humanity were just to just like ditch technology tomorrow, become that would be potatoes. a novel moment. But yeah. I don't know if that's even you know possible. possible. Like, Do you think it's the end of everything we've ever known or the beginning of nothing we've never known? <laughs> I think, well, I think that one of the possibilities is a reset of this universe that we live in. Like a, just another Big Bang. You know what I mean? It ends and starts again from the beginning. Billions and billions and billions of years of stardust expanding and forming into planets and planets forming into these things and you know life developing over billions and billions of years just to get back to this point again 
because Ugh. it's really just an experience of the singularity to do this. Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the new universe, I hope that the Big Bang Theory, the TV show, never happens. Because that's like one of the worst things that happened in our universe, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, it's like, for a long time, people thought that singularity event would be a nuclear war. You know, but... Uh, it still could be. I mean, don't put that out of the... We have some no, crazy I motherfuckers don't, in the world. But it just seems like the way things are trending, that uh, with artificial intelligence, that it's there's like... Uh, you know, it's we're going to get to a point where as humans we're not going to be able to comprehend what is happening. We're going to be it's... obsolete. We're going to make ourselves fucking obsolete. Yeah. Yes. That's why you I'm mean... always super nice to my Alexa. Whenever I ask it for things, I always say please and thank you just in case like one day they take over. Exactly. My mom will call her as a bitch sometimes and I'm like Careful. don't say that. And I, and I tell my mom like, and I tell her Alexa, that's not me. That ain't me. I like I'm nice to you, so just remember that shit. And also, I don't know, fuck with yeah. my mom because my mom's nice. She doesn't understand, you know. Yeah, I, she just I know wants somebody, you to play the the songs she wants. I know somebody <laughs> talks shit to Alexa, and it fucking next day aired her a bag of dog shit. Really? That, That's cool, man. They're like getting smarter next day. So, um, yeah, and it was delivered by a a, a Nazi. A, a drone holding a dog that needed to shit. And it oh, dropped the, dog. And the dog. That must shit have been terrifying the for the dog. Frankly, it was, but I mean, you know. So, I hope robots are nice to dogs. That's just I don't one know thing if I hope. make it to like, it's, it's, things are like, it's so weird because it's, you, we would think the future would be robots and all this stuff, but it's really more, it's really closer to, uh, like the movie The Matrix, where it's like we're creating technology that will make ourselves, like you said, make ourselves obsolete. And in doing so, you know, like if you look at The Matrix, right, it's a bunch of humans in these pods that are being used for energy and this and that. Who says that they didn't sign up for that? Like this is the big, the chip in your head is the, it's the intro to that. Yeah. yeah. So the question is What do you think about like, simulation theory in regards to all this? Well, I think it kind of, I, I, I don't like the word simulation because I, I think that in that kind of points towards it not being real in a way. And I think this is real in its own way. What's, what's real I anyways? Believe, though, well, I like... think it's like, that's the, the classic thing I've always said, like fake tits. If you can touch them, then they're real, you know, like the, it's what, what's your definition of reality? Yeah. You know? Right. Well, that's the thing. And there's like, we obviously are experiencing a reality as a human being here in what appears to be, I mean, it's, it's, it is a simulation and it's, it, and it's not from the bigger picture. It is from yeah. the human experience. It's not, it's right. the experience of being human. Uh, so it's actually like a, it's a gift and it's a gift to be able to like make stuff and be in time and like, have this experience of like living this life and all this because in the singularity like it's all just one kind of ever formless thing yeah. but there does seem to be like you know and you can look at certain dmt experiences there does seem to be so that's my question like it what i'm what i've seen last night seems to be what i would consider the, the unity of all things that doesn't mean that there's not other versions of this sure that are uh, that you can visit on the way to that you know what i mean and that's what i think that a lot of other people experience too is like these meeting entities and all this stuff like this thing was just like a formless anything you know what i mean like the fact that it showed me my mom is what told me that like Oh, you're showing me that. Like, fuck. Now I get it. Like, you're not showing me my mom. You're showing me that this is everything and can be. It's it's unlimited potential. Yeah. 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 And like I think that's really what this all came out of. If like going back far enough, everything came out of like this pregnant, un like realized limitless potential. And then yep. it exploded into this, you know, and it's almost like there's so many different ways to try to 
like perceive this concept of the singularity you know like it, you could look at it as like we're stepping out of this dimension and moving on to like more dimensional uh, an extra dimensional reality where you know we're not limited to the three dimensions within this human form you know like yeah. that's really yes. what a dmt trip is as a chemical interface for this three-dimensional body to experience extra dimensional space and no time you know or like just beyond time you know yeah and some people and, get there without even using dmt it's just easier for us laymen to, to get up there yeah. exactly but it's like they i guess the question really is like and it, i it's like there to me there's pro i my my hypothesis would be that there are lower dimensions of reality there are higher dimensions of reality for sure they're all under the undercurrent of all of them is that singularity so sure. like the, this idea of us reaching the singularity could just be the reset of this dimension or maybe it's all dimensions are reaching that point at the same time and then it's that or it's something completely new and novel or it's like just a completely like, novel universe or the human co like collective consciousness is no longer limited to three-dimensional reality yeah you know and yeah and that could that, be the fourth dimension exactly well, I've, so, always, I've always looked at it like that that was the purpose of dmt and stuff like that was to educate humanity throughout you know history you know, using the tea, using everything. And as we get reincarnated into body after body after body, eventually we reached one part where bodies are no longer uh, a necessity and our yeah. souls and stuff like that truly become one. And in that, not saying that we're all one, but we, we experience something entirely shifted Different. and entirely not. Well, that's it. Like it's it because there still seems to be even outside of the three dimensional space, there still seems to be like entities, right? that have their own individuation from the collective exactly. source of it all, but they're right. operating on a higher vibratory level or whatever you want to like, however you want to phrase it. So there's still individuation, but they have more access to the collective than we do in these human bodies within this exactly. three dimensional reality. And That's where you get like telepathy, well be, all sorts of other things. Exactly. There could very well be, you know, levels under us that sure. we evolved, that we came into this. So it's like, you know, and yeah, man, I don't know, man, like fucking that shit. So I think what's happening when you smoke DMT is number one, your, your vibrational quality gets raised. And I think that psychedelics in general, that's what they do. They raise your vibrational quality. But I do think that in a body, we're limited uh, to what band of frequency that we can access. And it's I like having a that... fucking radio receiver, right? Like it doesn't, it can only pick up so many frequencies. It's limited by its hardware. Yeah. And the human body right. is pretty much limited by its hardware. So as know? an analogy, think of it as like the human body is a radio. Yeah. And the fourth dimension is a television. And the fifth dimension is fucking ca like cable internet. You know what I mean? It's like these steps up in frequency band uh use and bandwidth you know what i mean so you can access huge swaths of information which is basically what ai is doing right yeah so we're trying to access what we're trying to do is increase the bandwidth of what's possible in this reality and which is limited by the human mind i wonder if like maybe the singularity will be when artificial intelligence and the human body like become completely intertwined so that the human mind and the human body has access to all the information like ai all time yeah that'd be crazy that would be that's a great fucking way of looking at it i think another way of looking at it is fucking like what if it was and all we can do is speculate obviously but what if it was like you know there are these bands of vibration and the singularity just means everything just shifts up and a new one hits the bottom. Yeah. And one at the top drops back into the fucking... Into the, the bin. That's, yeah. kind, of, that's in, kind of what I was saying, like, where where it's like, you know, the... uh, It's like we 
it's not a it's not it's both an ending and a beginning really like it's yes, the end exactly it's, it's the end of the old and the beginning of the new you know yes. yeah and yeah, it's fuck. that's the dichotomy of all of it like the the yeah so it's 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 interesting man like what time to be alive it really it's is fucking and, like it was just so fascinating for all this to happen and then like immediately have this experience so you know we could talk a little bit more about you know like the there's really nowhere to go from where we're at right now it's like okay like even if, if all this is true we just gotta wait and see what happens you know what i mean it's like but what where do people i guess i could see a, a rejection of um of technology and people kind of splitting into groups where there's like the group that takes that path and there's the group that doesn't Another thing, like if you if you're into alien shit, come on, man, you got people. I am, dude. You know me. <laughs> like I love alien shit. I I've never seen one except on DMT. But uh, like when you look, much. when you look at there you well, go, scum cave. I, I've seen UFO shit. Like, well, there you go. For so sure. So if we were to look at like this alien folklore, like I'm pretty, I've watched all the documentaries and all that shit, and the idea of the Greys is that they. Uh, went too far with technology and lost the ability to like emote and feel and express and all this. So they turned into like this little gray thing. And the idea of what they're doing here is they're coming into this dimension to, uh, and like the idea of human abduction. I know this is getting kind of crazy. I'm not saying I believe this. I just enjoy watching. I, I don't it. know if it's true or not, but like the idea of, of alien abduction or whatever is that these great aliens are uh, trying to get DNA from us so they can splice it back with theirs and they can become more human again because they went too far with technology. Yeah. So this is like an idea that's been kicked around for a really long time now. And it's just interesting to me because you can, and they're also in a way we've, it, it, there's other stories of us being warned about it. Like this is what happened. You know what I mean? If you continue down this path. Yeah. Well, there's also like, you know, the reptilians that are kind of here that are like running the fucking scheme behind everything that are, you know, politics infiltrating and stuff like that. And then the the whites, the Nordics. like the, the yeah. Nordics. Yeah. yeah. And they're really like, good one. well, yeah. So that I always thought they came and then fucked monkeys and, or like fucked our ancestors, like Neanderthals. And then that's how we became human. It's possible. I mean, like the the folklore <laughs> states that like the Nordics are the ones here to help us. And yeah, they're, they're the good, ones man. who like told us about the greys. They're yeah. the like a pious evolved out of all of them. And yeah. the greys are like the ones that took this other path. And, Little mischievous know, but, cunts. Yeah. But, and the you reptile, know, reptilian. As an Hillary analogy, Clinton. whether you, uh, anybody just... <laughs> whether anybody believes it or not, as an analogy, like it, it makes sense if you look at it in that way. So it's like, um, yeah, man, I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts on this? Like, my mind is so melted right now. Like, I've been like just like thinking about this because you come back from that thing, and I would I couldn't talk for like five minutes. Like literally, I kept trying to talk and I couldn't because it was just too much. I totally was... get that. I uh, I have had that experience without psychedelics, like when I was uh, teaching meditation uh, back in the day. I used to get that experience where like I would lose language and get completely like absolutely mind fucked when I would try to find like the defining line between this and that. Yeah. Like if yeah. I try to find the defining line between like my leg and the couch right now, I would like lose language because I couldn't figure out where I ended and where the couch started Mars or like, not. or like, like even theoretical shit, like the, the theoretical, like conceptual difference between you, your personhood and my personhood, you know, like when I go looking for that defining line, like where does that exist? I can't find it. There isn't, it doesn't fucking exist. There is no actual defining line between anything. We're all so yeah. interconnected. And that would just like trip me right the fuck out to the point where like I couldn't talk or I couldn't formulate thoughts in my head properly anymore. And I, it kind of does the same thing when I think about 
you know, the singularity too, where like, as soon as I start really like diving down that fucking rabbit hole, I start to like lose the ability to process thought in the same way. It's really strange. Do you think it's like intentionally that we're wired that way, that we're, when we approach some level of knowledge that we're not supposed to know, our brains kind of start shorting out? Yes, definitely. I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think we're like the human brain just doesn't have the uh, computing power the or computing something. Computing power to, you know, like any sort of like spiritual realization or things like that that you read about in books or, you know, achieve through meditation or spiritual practice or psychedelics or anything. The, the one thing that comes back from that is like it it's, has nothing to do with mind. It transcends mind. You know yeah. what I mean? It transcends like that processor, that computer that we have in the our heads thinking, the can't analytical understand thinking part, what yeah. that is, which is why it's it's impossible to describe really in a way that somebody else can understand. You know, you can do your best, like uh, kind of best way of bringing it out, whether that's through art or through music or through speaking or through writing or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, it's you, you can't. It's, you know, the, the way you I like it up... is like you go, somebody goes to Paris and comes back. Like, I could tell you about it, but it's, you're Lots not going to know what it's like to be in Paris unless you go yeah. there. You know what I mean? That's really what it is. I find like it's sort of, you end up transcending language and going into like, you, you end up in poetry. Like, that's like, uh, it's pure creativity. When you've, really. when you've had those like enlightenment type experiences or like, you have a samadhi experience or something like that talking about it with regular language ends up sounding like poetry or it's yeah. like you know you're um it, it becomes like analogies or metaphors because like you can't really describe it i think it's a book the a course in miracles that says um what does it say it's like words are just uh oh what is that i'm gonna butcher it just symbols of symbols thus twice removed from reality you know words are symbols of symbols you know yeah. and so it's like there's two steps back from reality because right. they're what's perceiving reality and then you have to interpret that into language and then interpret that out your mouth to yeah. ver verbalize it so it's like two steps removed from actual reality which is just experience and that was a huge part of mckenna's talks and teachings and shit like that was centered around language you know he was like that's the barrier language yeah, yeah. is the barrier like that's it so like we could we can use terms like ego death or you know there's a lot of terms thrown around in the psychedelic community um you know spiritual like community yeah yeah um anything like that but you know it's really at the end of the day uh the, the language is not experience and language is the barrier between uh like one person's experience and another it's just not very effective at translating experience from one person to another you know not in its, it's just, current it's, form it's, it's not really yeah. crass like you know like it's just well, it's, it's, one the only, it's one of the few things like throughout humanity as a whole that is barriers like actual tangible barriers between people i mean like everyone experiences things in a very similar way we see we hear we touch we taste the yeah. one thing that we do is we speak differently and it's hard to understand people around the world you know it's very yeah, well, strange even, even music even when you like, speak music, the same language you know, yeah. even speaking the same language, it's still like there's so much interpretation fucking involved. And look at like look at now with like text messaging and stuff like that, you lose a whole another layer of communication in, in that exactly. And For think sure. about like music as a language, right? Exactly, because you, but, music can like it, it bring up an emotion in people who speak completely different. Well, that's languages. what I was going to say. The right. dude, who, like, one of the maestries at the at the ayahuasca church. He was telling us about how he learned to speak English through listening to songs. And he didn't know what the songs were, but he would just sing the words over and over again. So when he started learning English, a lot of words came naturally to him because he knew them from songs. Yeah. Awesome. And like, and so, God, what was I about to say? I don't know. And it doesn't matter, I guess. Yeah. It's fucking language. Fuck language. But you look at like all these, like, it, these experiences, like psychedelic experiences, right? You're never communicated to 
on mushrooms, on LSD, on DMT through language ever. Yeah, it's like, all it's never English help. coming at you. It's either felt, it's shown in like, or you it, just like, know it, or you just, yeah. yeah, or you just understand it. Like it, all those things can happen. You know, yeah. like mushrooms have showed me like cartoony characters doing things to kind of show me something. Uh, the TMT experience, you know, using my mother as a thing or showing me a city like this is this is the barrier that we need to understand. It's less about mapping out what that is and more about understanding what the language is. And there's a movie about that, too, about aliens coming and they the whole thing is centered around creating a dialogue and understanding language and wow mars attacks like... i love that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> i forget what it's called but... <laughs> anyways man like holy shit that's all i could say well, about that what um a fucking I, rabbit know, hole yeah i yeah. really wanted to just share that while it was fresh so i know we went a little a little off the deep end on Out this there. one you know i apologize <laughs> but i wanted to share with you guys and with the audience and uh you know thank you for listening if you come this long and uh, if you made it past uh, the reptilian stuff, even, Guys, the, even more points. This week, my OnlyFans will be actually showing pictures of the Singularity. Never before uh, seen pictures of the Singularity's butthole. Um, there you go. go. check it out. It's going to be really, really cool. So shout out Midjourney. Shout out to Singularity. Uh, if you got any questions, send us at uh, info or no, sorry, at psychedelicstatepodcast <laughs> at gmail.com. And uh, until then, we'll see you next time and say travel. Peace. Fuck language. <laughs>